morning guys welcome back to another video today I have a perfume video for you and it's gonna be a really fun one I think so it's an idea that I've been toying with for a while and this is like my ideal collection or my fantasy collection if I only had you know 25 or 30 perfumes like a normal human being what would those be so I started out today's video not really knowing what number I was gonna go with I'll take you through my thought process and I'll show you the whole process my mind going through everything picking the perfumes and at the end I will share with you the ones I decided to quote unquote keep. Just to be clear, this is not a declutter. I still am holding true to no declutters for a year. I wanna really make sure that I'm giving all my perfumes a solid chance before I make any decisions. So it's just as much for me as it is for you guys as well. Yeah, and also one other disclaimer, this is subject to change. Like probably five minutes after doing this video, I was like, mm, I don't know if I should have kept that one. <laughs> I mean, this can change, right? Day to day, week to week. Sometimes you put on a perfume and you're like, oh, I'm just not loving it as much today. So anyways, I hope that you guys really enjoy and yeah grab yourself a cup of coffee it's a bit of a long video and let's just get started and if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much for stopping by my name is Alithia and on this channel we do a little bit of everything and I would love if you would stick around and also feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram and let's get started all right guys I hope everybody is having a really good day it is about 11 30 12 o'clock here and um, I'm on days off so I feel really good <laughs> as you can tell probably my creative bug is back and I've got time to make videos and it's just so nice to be able to relax enjoy my perfumes enjoy my coffee make some other content for you guys and um, I'm also going to be making a little bit more other type of content so like more clothing more fashion more home decor minimalism and organization I guess and as you can see it's just a really bright beautiful day today um, I just love how my room is illuminated by the Sun it's very relaxing and yeah I was inspired to make this video for you guys I have been wanting to make this particular video for a really long time this is kind of inspired by my ideal collection what my ideal perfume collection would look like if I cut it down to a smaller number I'm not really sure what that number is off the top of my head at the moment. I'm just going to talk my way through my thoughts as we go. So we'll just start explaining things. And as you can see, I pulled my perfumes out of my closet. They usually are in my closet. I pulled them out because the lighting is way better when they're out here in the light. Um, and then you can see all of them and it also looks really nice. For those of you who will ask, this is um, a nail polish from the company Beatles and I got it from Amazon. Actually, it was so inexpensive. I thought it was going to be cheap. Like I I thought they weren't going to be very good but actually they hold up so well and they're just beautiful and this is like a non-wipe top coat and I will link all of this down below for you guys I do do my own gel nails at home because it saves so much money and because I work in healthcare so it doesn't make sense for me to be paying to have them put on and then remove it so yeah I just do them myself and that's about it and this color is the most beautiful shade of gray and then I'm just drinking uh, like regular like coffee grounds from Walmart. <laughs> Nothing special at all. A smaller dose of caffeine today because I feel like I got too much the last two days. So I haven't counted, but I think on my tray at the moment, I have about 49-ish perfumes, something like that. I do have more perfumes than this, but some of them are away in a bin underneath the bed. And those are perfumes that either I struggle with for some reason, or they're just not my absolute, absolute favorites. And I don't want things to look cluttered. It's like a constant struggle between, I wanna have a big collection for YouTube and also because I really love perfume. So I always wanna try new perfumes and part of me wants a really big collection. And then there's this other part of me who wants a small, minimal, concise, tiny collection. You know, like I would be happy with one of these trays full of perfumes, not all of them. However, they're obviously not all gonna fit and they certainly don't all fit on a tray. Like I do have this beautiful perfume tray over here and they definitely don't fit. I can get about, I think I can get about 15 to 20 perfumes comfortably on this tray before it starts to look overwhelmed, but that would be ideal. It's just to have a beautiful tray full of perfumes and not to have to have crazy storage for them. And one day, depending on where things go and how I feel, I'm really trying to make decisions based on what's right for me, not what's right for YouTube, not what's right for the algorithm, not what's right for 
um, you know, business, <laughs> even though, you know, YouTube is definitely a business, um, I still need to do what's right for me. And I think I can do both. So yeah, I'm really trying to really go look inside myself and make decisions that are right for myself when it comes to my perfume collection. And the fact of the matter is, I can't get it out of my system. A very large part of me still wants a small collection. I just, I can't deny it, you guys, like I just do. I'm not one of these people who wants like 200 perfumes. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoy this. Basically what I decided I would do is go through the perfumes that I have currently on my shelf, which I love all of these, by the way. Well, there's a cup, there's one that I'm like, eh. Actually, there's two that I'm kind of on the fence about, but I pretty much love all of these perfumes. So that would be very, very difficult for me to cut this in half or whittle it down or whatever the case is. But I thought that it would be a good exercise if I did cut it down, if I did choose like my top, you know, 20, maybe 30 perfumes, what would that look like? This is not planned out. I have no idea what perfumes I'm going to pick. Um, I just thought it would be a fun activity and the lighting is perfect and I have a really nice relaxing morning. It's just the perfect day to go through and do this. There's only 46, that's really not that many, but let's just say for the sake of argument and the sake of imagine I had only one perfume tray and I wanted them all to fit on the tray. That's roughly 30 perfumes, right? <laughs> all right, let's see if I can cut this down to my top 30 just for fun. It'll be a good exercise. It'll be a really good exercise in minimalism. Cut it down to 30 and let's go. <laughs> Before we get started, I wanna show you this little baby sitting here that you probably will be asking, what the heck, when did you get that? This was my daughter's cloud that I had had like a year and a half ago, two years ago. As you guys know, I've never really liked cloud, so I gave it to her, but I actually think I prefer this to the cloud intense. I did get a bottle of the Cloud Intense. When I compare them side by side, I actually like this one better than Cloud Intense. I don't know why. I think Cloud Intense is trying too hard to be back at Rouge 540. It's just, it's almost a little spicier and I don't know, I, I just don't enjoy it that much. But to be fair, I don't really enjoy this one that much either. It's just, I thought I would pull it out and try it because everyone seems to love it. Even my boyfriend likes it. So I thought I would just pull it out and see, but as you can tell, this one definitely wouldn't make it into my top 30. It's just kind of, it really shouldn't even be on my tray, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, I thought it was kind of cute sitting there. I like the colors and I thought I would just try it out. So the first one that I see is Versace Crystal Noir. This is a 90 mil. I just got this because I have a little 30 mil that looks like a travel size and it's way too small, even though it's cute. This is a favorite new perfume of mine. This is definitely in my top 30. So let's put him in the bin. All right, the next one that I see that I really, really love is Givenchy Hot Couture. This is also a love of mine. It's a new love. My boyfriend loves this one on me. I'm just gonna give it a, give it a sniff here. Yeah, I really, really like that one. It's kind of a new favorite. And we'll definitely keep that one. It's like a grown, sexy, mature woman. All right, let's move down to this bottom row here just for fun. So definitely my Miss Dior, of course. I can't live without Miss Dior. Definitely my flower bomb. This is one I've had for so long and it has so many good memories and just a sweet, likable, everyday perfume. Boyfriend loves it. Um, and also I've had this one for the longest in my whole collection. So that one's a definite must. Mon Guerlain, of course, this has to be in my top 30. I love Mon Guerlain. It's a really nice like lavender vanilla. All right, anything else from the shelf? Um, okay, I love a lot of the ones that are on the shelf, but I'm gonna try to be a little bit careful because especially with the two in the back and yeah, let's just skip this shelf for now. Let's go to another shelf. So when I look at my date night perfumes, definitely Luby Rouge, you guys know this is a favorite. This is cardamom, vanilla, and iris. It's a powdery, woody vanilla and it makes me feel very, very posh and very bougie. Armani Code Satin. You guys, I can tell this is already gonna be bad because <laughs> I'm just loving all of them. Armani Code Satin, this is an amazing, um, like kind of spicy, gourmand, super, super sexy. Oh, I love it so much, I love it so much. And it's also discontinued. Yeah, I love this. Like that's a perfume I could wear all the time even though it's a date night perfume. All right, let's go to the top shelf here. I see a lot of perfumes on this top shelf that I 
love. <laughs> this is going to be so hard. Okay. Um, Peregrina from Tamine. This is a new love of mine. This is a caramel, vanilla, rose, a little bit of a spicy scent. Um, it's beautiful. It is so elegant and so classy. And I just love the bottle design. It smells so good and it's very expensive. It's a niche perfume. And this is like um, the perfect mix between classy, like elegant rose meets sultry, feminine, sexy evening. Sweet, little bit, tiny bit gourmand, but still so beautiful and I love it. So this is definitely on the list. Um, okay. Spiritus Double Vini. I don't have to think too hard about that one. This is a definite. This is the best vanilla that I've ever smelled in my life. And I wear it very sparingly. There's not much missing for two reasons. Number one, I haven't worn it much. Number two, I did give a little decant to a friend and then I haven't really touched it because I don't want to run out. It's so expensive. So I only wear this for special occasions because I'm really not in a hurry to run out and buy another bottle of this. All right. Um... Yeah, I can see this is going to start getting hard because I have three black opiums. Yeah, and the one I love the most is actually discontinued. <laughs> um, but let's go with Kaoli Vanilla. I also love Kaoli Vanilla. This is another one of my favorite vanilla perfumes. This is a um, brown sugar vanilla orchid scent. Oh yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good, so enjoyable. And this one, the bottle has really darkened, which gives it this like richer vanilla vibe. It's just, oh, so good. I have backups of this one, you guys, down there in that bag, I have backups. Yeah, this is obviously, obviously, without question. All right, um, Contra Moi from Louis Vuitton. This is a very elegant, very classy, um, kind of an herbal, vanilla. It's a little bit powdery and there's actually actually some chocolate in here as well. There's cacao. It's just heavenly. It's really beautiful, really sophisticated and I love it. And it was also pricey and it's also engraved with my initials and gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. On the skin, this dries down to pure heaven on my skin, you guys. And also my boyfriend really loves it. And how can you not love the bottle design. I'm a huge Louis Vuitton, huge Louis Vuitton fan. So yeah, Contraba definitely has to stay. All right. Um, this is fun, <laughs> but it's hard. Uh, okay. Mongerlan Intense. Do I really need both Mongerlans? I love this perfume though. It is a favorite. Yeah, that one's a favorite. I, you can't go wrong with the Mongerlans, you guys. Like, you just can't. You, you could literally have 10 of them and you could just keep them all because they're all so good. So yeah, this one is a definite keeper. All right. Armani C Intense. This one, you guys, is kind of surprising to me and it might be surprising to you guys as well. But this is a newer one to my collection. I got it a couple months ago, I think in like October, November, maybe. I'm obsessed with it. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's very, very feminine. It's like a black currant, um, what is it? Black currant, patchouli, benzoin, rose, I think. So elegant. Oh my gosh, you guys. You know what? When you take a break from doing perfume videos and from like really scrutinizing your collection and then you come back, you have such, such an increased appreciation for how much you love your perfumes, you know? You need to focus on other things sometimes. You take a little break. But yeah, this is definitely in my top top, top, top 30 for sure. All right. Um, I love black opium. So if I had to pick a black opium, honestly, you guys, that's tough. Okay. So the original black opium is good old, good old regular sweet black opium. I love the Nuit Blanche. However, this one is discontinued, so I won't be able to buy it again. It doesn't really matter though, right? It's not about it's not about what's available, it's what I love. Um, so I really like that one. When I run out of the Nuit Blanche, I will probably buy the Illicit Green because the Illicit Green has a creamy, kind of a nutty, milky texture to it because of the fig that's in here. So I think the Illicit Green is actually kind of a good dupe for the Nuit Blanche for those of you who really like it. And I'm not going to include my roller balls and travel sprays in my collection. To me, they're... To me, they're a little bit separate. So yeah, I do really like this one. And then we have the Black Opium Extreme. This one's a little bit different. This one's more 
it's really good, but this one's a little bit more heavy on the like chocolate coffee vibe. It's not so sweet and fruity and milky. Um, so you know, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the Nuit Blanche, even though it's discontinued. I'm just gonna pick this one. If I can only pick one black opium that's sitting here right now, this is the one that I'm gonna pick. So it's starting to look a little bit sparse, and I don't want to, you know, get to the end of my line and have no summer perfumes. So let's go down to the summer perfumes and see what we can find. All right, so looking at all my summer babies, um, Armani Blue Turquoise. This is a perfume that I could break my number challenge. Like if I got to 30 and I still didn't have this in the 30, I would add it and just make it be 31 because this one's incredible. This is a vanilla, um, salty, lang lang jasmine. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Woody so good. It's got like this um, cipro oil in it. It smells very oceanic, very spa-like, very feminine, very beautiful. Yep, I love that one. It's very special. It's a really, really special perfume. It's not like an everyday grab and go for myself. Also a little bit pricey, but yeah, love it. So yeah, that has to be in there for sure. Um, all right, summer freshies. Okay, Olympia from Paco Rabanne. This isn't really a summer freshie. This is one you could wear anytime. This is a salty vanilla. I absolutely love it. I still love it just as much as when I first got it. Yep. <laughs> and this was actually a blind buy in the beginning of quarantine when they took all the testers off the shelves. This was one of the very first ones I blind purchased and wow, was it a winner. Like I loved it then. Boyfriend loves it, great for dates. Yeah, that one's a good one. Um, okay, okay, okay. Louis Vuitton, a trap rev. I love this one because this one I actually bought when I was on vacation. It smells incredible. This is a kind of a chocolatey, lychee, um, fruity floral, patchouli. There's some peony in here. It's light and juicy, but also like sweet and sexy at the same time. And I absolutely love the bottle, of course. And it smells amazing. It smells amazing. I just love it. Yeah, that is, uh, yeah. And for the amount that I wear perfume, you guys, like as much as I love perfume, I don't wear it every single day. I just don't, and I'm probably not gonna start. I just don't, so. I spend a lot of time in my pajamas, and I'm not gonna wear a $500 perfume when I'm at home in my pajamas. <laughs> for the amount that I wear perfumes, I can afford to have a few pricier ones because they do last me a long time. So yeah, a trap rev, love it. Highly, highly recommend if you're, oops, highly recommend if you're looking for an easy to wear everyday summer perfume. Okay, um, next we're gonna go with Gabrielle Essence from Chanel because this is one of my favorite classy summer freshy perfumes. This one actually has white florals. It has yellow florals, there's a little bit of musk. There is a little bit, I think, of coconut in here hiding in the background. It's fruity. It smells like Chanel, oh, it's so good. It smells like um, fresh, fruity, floral, but Chanel version. So good, I just love it. And this, this bottle drives me crazy. It is so small. It's a 50 ml and it looks like like what even is this? So small. Anyway, um, I would love to have that in a larger bottle. Also love the packaging. And this is the Essence. Very important to note that it is the Essence and not the original. The original is nice too though, and I would like to revisit it, but I don't need both. So keep that one. All right, I don't even want to count and see where we're at because, I mean, that looks like a pretty nice little collection, but let's just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, good. We've got some room left. We've got some room left. Okay. <laughs> see, it gets harder once you get to like toward the end. Um, all right, I see a couple more in the date night section. So in the date night section, obviously, how could I forget? <laughs> Alien, this has been a long time favorite. This is one that also would make me break my number. If I got to 30, I would allow myself 31 for this one. Yeah, it's so good. It it makes me feel very powerful, very feminine, and I just love the way that it smells. So Amber Woody Jasmine, yes. Keep that one, of course. Um, Gold Couture. I have to have Gold Couture, you guys, because I really like it. It's kind of a staple. It's the only thing that I have in my collection that is like this one. It is my sexy 
uh, scandalous, flirty, I guess I shouldn't say scandalous, but you know, like when you basically just want to smell super, super seductive for your partner, this is what I wear. Um, it's my boyfriend's, one of my boyfriend's favorites on me and I reserve it solely for intimate occasions. That's the only time I ever wear it and it's that perfume, you know, so I love that one. It's caramel, really good. And I also want a good girl. So I have two good girls. I have the Legere and the Supreme. My problem is that I kind of want both because the good girl Legere is like a fresher, lighter version of the original good girl. And it just has something in it that none of my other perfumes have. I don't know what it is. It's this deep, dark, feminine sexiness that I really like. The Good Girl Supreme is smells a lot like the original Good Girl in the opening, but it becomes this sweet vanilla berry in the dry down. And it's it's really, really sexy and I really like it. I have to say, like, if I'm just going off scent alone, I do prefer Supreme. So I will take Supreme for now and then Ugh. But this is a problem. Like I would not want to get rid of my perfumes. That's why this is so hard. I would I would not want to get rid of this one, you know, just because I like that one better. All right, Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Crush 62. This is the Pistachio Salted Caramel. Absolutely, I love this. I don't really count this as a perfume though, you guys. So I'm gonna let this be an extra. All right, <laughs> this is where it's gonna get tough. Coco Mademoiselle. I feel like Coco Mademoiselle, as cliche as it is, this is a must have in every woman's collection, or in my collection anyways. It's just super, super elegant, classy, everyday, work appropriate, not for me because I'm a nurse, <laughs> but work appropriate for everybody else and yeah, it's just good. It's just good. It makes me feel super classy and you just cannot go wrong with it. And it's Chanel and I'm a huge Chanel fan so we're going to grab it. Grab another Chanel baby. Um, Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche, or sorry, Eau Tendre. This is a really nice, like, light, fruity floral scent with a little bit of musk. And it does have a Chanel kind of an undertone to it. Reminds me a little bit of Marc Jacobs Daisy. I think that if you're not a Chanel fan or you don't want to dish out the coin, just get your yourself a bottle of um, Marc Jacobs Daisy. They're very similar, especially the Daisy Intense. Very, very close. And they both give off the same, the same vibe and they're both compliment getters. And my only complaint with this one, it doesn't have great performance. Like it isn't super loud and projecting and it doesn't last on my skin for very long, but I really like the way it smells. I should get the Eau de Parfum. Maybe when this one's done, I'll get the Eau de Parfum. The difference though is that this one's a little bit fresher. The Eau de Parfum is a little bit heavier and like more floral musk heavy where this one is more like fruity fresh. All right, you guys, so this is the point where it starts to get difficult because I really, really like um, most of the ones that are here, if not love them. So what I'm gonna do to make it easier on myself is remove a couple that I know for sure would not be on the list if I had to cull down. One of those is The Cloud. That would definitely not be on my list. I don't know what it is about this perfume, you guys. Nothing wrong with it. I've just always preferred REM. And as much as this smells, it smells so good. Like it smells amazing. Just like I thought Backheart Rouge smelled amazing. I just don't enjoy wearing it. I don't know why. For whatever reason, I just don't enjoy wearing it. So that one won't make it. Another one that probably wouldn't make it, let's be honest, as much as I like it, I don't want to discount it. As much as I like this one, Tuberose has taken me a really long time to get on board with, but it's beautiful. I don't know. <laughs> it's so, thank God I'm not actually doing this, you guys, because I don't want to say goodbye to any of these. Um, but anyway, yeah, it, let's just be honest. It doesn't quite fall into my top 30. Um, okay, this one doesn't, this is not really a perfume, bare vanilla. This one just doesn't fall into my top 30. It's really good, but if you guys saw my recent video talking about body sprays, um, I like it, but I like 70% like it. But this is actually a great dupe for Indult Tea Hoda. And also if you don't want to spend the money on something like Cali Vanilla or an expensive vanilla niche, this is actually really good and it lasts a really long time, but it won't make it into my top 30. Um, okay, let's see here. Let's see. Um, Armani C. I really do like this one, but I prefer the Intense. The Intense is just stronger and has better longevity. So if I had to make the choice, this one would not be in there. 
Um, okay, this is tough. This is getting tough. Okay, all right, Ariana Grande, R.E.M. I really like this one. It's one of the very few celebrity perfumes I actually have ever owned, and it's so good. It's so relaxing. Okay, it keeps wanting to focus on Flora Botanica. There we go. It's so relaxing. It's a lavender, gourmand, sweet, salty, skin-like. I just love this one. I find it so comforting, so cozy, and I have really good memories with this one. I have memories of like super cold winter nights, pandemic, <laughs> cuddled up inside on my couch with my boyfriend, like, watching movies. Yeah, I just have great memories with it, and I just really like it, so. And also, like, decent performance with this one, too, so that one would make it. Okay, if I had to choose, if I had to choose, this is getting really hard, really hard. <laughs> thank, like, thank God I'm not doing this, for real. Um, okay, <sighs> where are we at now? Let me recount. All right, so I just recounted, and I'm at 24, so I have six left. Let's be real here. <laughs> it's not that difficult. Come on, Olivia, you can do this. You can pick six more perfumes. What are they going to be? Okay. We are going to go with Parfum de Marly Oriana. This one makes it, I really like this one. Again, it's a little bit more expensive, but I really, really like it. And actually, you guys, I have to say, I like this better than Love Don't Be Shy Extreme. I've officially decided, and I'll talk about that in another video. This perfume just does it for me. This has like that whipped cream, marshmallowy, lactonic attached to it. It also has a fruity component. It's a little bit powdery, but not too powdery. It's so beautiful and so feminine and 100% like this could be a signature scent. Oh, I just love it. And it does have a little bit of that like orange blossom neroli touch, but it's not nearly as strong or overpowering or like bubble gummy as it is in Love Don't Be Shy. Plus the bottle. I mean, let's be real here. Who doesn't want a bottle that's hot pink that looks like a Victorian piece of decor and has a little gem on the top? You know you want it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, I, uh, I love that one. Five more. Five more. Five more. This is actually like not too bad because as it sits right now, you guys, I have to be honest, the rest are all kind of a tie. There's a couple that might not quite, quite be on there. All right. Um, mm, okay. Mon exclusive. I'd probably keep this because this smells a lot like Mongerlan, even though this one is discontinued. It's a beautiful perfume and I absolutely love it. And I'd probably keep this. It's one of my favorite, but Mongerlan is a favorite like scent profile. So I can't help that. So I'll keep Mon exclusive. All right. I have four more left. Let's see here. Coco Noir, do you make it? Do you make it? So sexy and so classy and elegant. And this is like date night and a formal occasion, black tie event. Do I keep this? This is getting really hard. This is a contender. Olivia Bell, let me just re-experience. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Olivia Bell plays games with me. Sometimes it's too strong for me and too powdery and too something. There's something about it that is just too much sometimes. Um, so I'm going to say it won't make it because it doesn't always do it for me. Let's see. Chanel Chance Eau de Toilette. You know, I still love this one. I do still love this one. It's just, it's not as much a favorite these days as the Gabriel Essences, but it's still like classic Chanel summertime. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. All right, you guys. So I just had to put the camera down and really think hard for a minute. And I thought I would spare you my indecisiveness. And I kind of just went with the ones that jumped out at me in this moment. I put a couple of them on my skin. And the hardest part is that once you get to a certain point, they're all ties. You know what I mean? Like once you get to a certain point, it's like none of them are any better than the others. So I had a really hard time choosing the final few. But the ones that really stick out to me in this moment, Moment are Coco Noir. I sprayed this on my skin and I it's just so it's so classy, you guys. I have it on my arm right now, and yeah, there's just no comparison. I mean, what else actually really compares with Coco Noir? It is so good. Um, so yeah, that one is in there. I also went with my Valentino Donna Born in Roma because I really like this one. It's such an easy grab and go for me. As you can see, I have like a pretty good dent already in here. I don't know if you can see, there you go. It's sexy, flirtatious, girly, 
but it has a classy edge to it as well and like it's just really good I just really like it plus I'm a huge Valentino fan and then the other one that I went with which might be surprising is um Misty or Absolutely Blooming this one I put on my skin as well and it's just beautiful although you know what this one has a really big resemblance to a trap rev I always tell you guys that if you want a trap rev and you don't want to dish out the coin um get absolutely blooming they're kind of similar this one's a little bit more powdery it's not quite as sweet and it doesn't I mean they're just a little bit different but they're very close so if you like that whole like peony rose lychee raspberry scent profile you will love these you guys I'm telling you and I heard through the grapevine that this one is going to be discontinued what I love about the Absolutely Blooming is that I find the longer it sits on the shelf, um, like barring going completely expired, the longer it sits on the shelf, the better it smells. Um, it starts to smell more powdery and more rich and sweeter with time. So anyway, I digress. Those are the ones that I chose. And now I'm just going to go ahead and set them up nicely so I can give you guys like a quick recap of my top 30. <laughs> so just as an afterthought to let you guys know, I love like so many of these perfumes that are left. These are the ones that did not make it. Not that I don't love them. Like I love these perfumes, you know, I love Black Opium Extreme. I really, really enjoy L'Entre Rouge on the right occasion. So just to put into perspective for you guys, these are the ones that did not make it. Doesn't mean I don't like them. Um, as you guys know, I'm really, really enjoying Armani C Intense. I, or Armani C, I just prefer the Intense. Um, yeah, Livia Bell, I've talked about those enough. I really, really enjoy Poison Girl. Um, you know, it just isn't, you know, if I have to choose, it wouldn't be a favorite. I absolutely love the clean skin, like love it. Just, I guess if I had to choose, it maybe wouldn't make it. I don't know, but thank God we're not doing this because I love this. <laughs> um, yeah, I really love Flora Botanica, as you guys know. I really like Delina. C. Fiori is gorgeous. I don't know if C. Fiori would be a lifer, but it's really gorgeous. And of course, as you guys know, I love all my black opiums. I really love Note Finney from M. Meeklef. This one is a really beautiful, like boozy. Yeah, this one's really nice. It's a beautiful kind of a boozy, woody vanilla. And it just lasts forever, and if you like Kaoli Vanilla, you will probably really, really like this one. It's very similar. It lasts forever, you guys, and it has really good projection. Yeah, I love that one. And so yeah, my point being, um, you know, just because these don't make it doesn't mean I don't love them, and I still have more perfumes than this. <laughs> They're just in a box under my bed just to keep things looking simple for my own peace of mind. All right, so I set them up on my dresser, and obviously like even though I cut them down by like quite a good percentage it still is excessive isn't it like it's still a lot um but yeah I don't know ideally I would have all my perfumes would fit on one tray but <laughs> I just love too many perfumes so it's not going to happen so yeah these are the ones that I've chosen to be my top 30 like I said thank goodness I'm not actually doing this because I left out some that I really like but you know this is a really refreshing experience because it lets me know what I feel like I can and cannot live without. Yeah, why don't we start out in the back and I'll just quickly show you one by one which ones made it into my top 30. Not gonna go into notes or anything like that. I'm just gonna literally list them for you. So first of all, in the top right, we have Armani C Intense. We have Gold Couture from Juicy Couture. We have Parfum de Marly Oriana. We have Louis Vuitton Trap Rev. We have Versace Crystal Noir Eau de Toilette. We have another Louis Vuitton, Contre Moi. We have Armani Code Satin. Unfortunately, a lot of these are discontinued. We have um, Givenchy Hot Couture. We have Christian Louboutin, Louis Rouge. We have My Cheat, which is a body spray, which is the Brazilian Crush Heroes 62. Back over to the right, we have Valentino Donna Born in Roma. We have Kaylee Vanilla 28. We have Miss Dior Absolutely Blooming. We have uh, Dior, <laughs> Dior, my gosh, Guerlain Mon Exclusive. We have Carolina Herrera Good Girl Supreme. Guerlain Spiritus Double Vani. Guerlain, um, <laughs> you guys, I'm drawing such a blank today. Mon Guerlain uh, Intense. Chanel Chance Eau de Toilette. Chanel Coco Noir, 
YSL Black Opium Nui Blanche, and to be fair, any black opium probably would suffice. Tamine Peregrina, Chanel Chance Eau Tendre, Pacaraban Olympia, Armani Privé Blue Turquoise, back over to the right. We have Victor and Ralph Flower Bomb, Mugler Alien, we have Chanel Gabriel Essence, Ariana Grande, R-E-M, Guerlain Mon Guerlain, Miss Dior from Dior, discontinued of course, and another Chanel, which is Coco Mademoiselle. So yeah, that was really eye-opening, and I guess it kind of puts into perspective like what my favorites are and what my taste is. And yeah, that's really about it, you guys. So I hope that you really enjoyed. I'm gonna go ahead and put these all back on my shelf now. So that was it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you really enjoyed hearing my thought process and seeing me go through my perfumes and choose which ones would be my favorite if I could only keep 25 or 30. And just for fun, let me know down below if you have a few Holy Grail perfumes that would always, always be in your collection. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon.